Hi, my name is Mike Aben, and welcome to episode two of my KSP campaign. As you may recall, the last episode ended with a mission where I sing simply put a single capsule onto the launch pad in order to run around and collect a little bit of science. And that being a free thing to do, I might as well do the same thing, this time sending it from the space plane hangar. The only difference being this time I'll put a goo canister on there because this one's going to end up on the runway and I can collect some goo from the runway, which I haven't done yet. So we'll stick that into the building queue. And we'll check to see. That's only going to tell oh, engineering is going to get researched first. That's good. So we'll research engineering. We'll warp to that. So now I got engineering 101. Then it's just another day and three hours to get that capsule from the space plane hangar. But before we go to that, it's time to put something else into the vehicle assembly building uh, building queue. And with uh, Engineering 101, I also unlocked basic rocketry. Both of those two nodes unlocked at the same time. So that unlocks a number of new parts, including this, uh, including the materials bay lab. And I do have this mission to get into space. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to build the best rocket I can to try and see if I can get into space, knock off that contract, but also perhaps get some uh, science up there. Now this, I do not have a lot of parts left over and, and of, of particular, cons um, or a lot of parts to work with. Um, I only have the one fuel can, this one very, very small fuel can, and uh, I only have the one um, liquid fueled engine. I, I don't have, I, I do have, um, the stack decouplers, but I do not have the radial decouplers. So the um, larger booster rockets, well, I probably could get creative, but I like to build things that look, I don't know, semi towards uh, real life. Now this, this went through quite a few iterations because it turned out to be quite the thing to fly. I was right towards the edge as far as my part count goes. I was right towards the edge as far as the weight of the vessel goes. Um, and uh, it has no reaction wheels other than the reaction wheels that are in the capsules. The only has those basic tail fins which have no control surfaces on them, so steering in the atmosphere, yeah, a little bit tricky. I can't veer too far from the retrograde or from the prograde vector when I fly it. And the reason for that is because of all of these small little fuel cans, and with KSP, the default behavior is that it drains the fuel from the top can first and works its way down. And what that means is that the center of mass of this vessel is going to move down quite dramatically as it burns through its fuel. And it comes to a point where the center of mass is below the center of lift. And at that point, this thing starts to become aerodynamically unstable and it doesn't want to stick to its prograde vector. It wants to flip around the other way. The other issue too is that if the engine gets off of that prograde vector, um, it's pushing a force that's kind of laterally. It wants to also spin it around. So the only thing to do is to kind of reduce the thrust and get back on that prograde vector. It makes this thing a pretty awkward thing to steer. So this went through quite a bit of iterations, but this ended up being the final product that I ended up with and uh, I'm hopeful that I'll be able to get it'll be Jeb this time he's going to be my next launch victim I mean no, no my next pilot I'm sorry and I'm hopeful I'll be able to get him out of the atmosphere with this particular vessel and that brings us to Bob out on the runway in this spud capsule he's going to collect them some, collect us some science so he does himself a crew report and then it's time to do a little bit of EVA he's going to course uh, do an EVA report out here on the runway he's going to collect the crew report from the from the uh, command capsule and store it back in there the one thing I did add was this uh, goo canister so we're going to be able to get some science from the runway with the goo canister but otherwise this is quite the carbon copy of the mission I did last episode with the uh, with the same command capsule on the launch pad you know, and then Bob, well, he kind of got in his head, you know, this capsule is rather, rather roundish. I wonder if I can roll this thing. I mean, if I can roll this thing off of the lawn, or the runway and onto another biome, I could collect another crew report. Seems like a smart thing to do. He just seems to be working rather well. I, I think I feel very clever about this. You know, one thing that this kind of does make me wish I did was put another 
goo canister on this thing so I could collect a second goo on uh, once I'm off of the runway and it was only after completing this mission that I realized you know what I'm not nearly as clever as I thought because I had forgotten the fact that Bob being a scientist I'm pretty sure he can reset this experiment and collect goo as many times as he wants from the single goo canister. I don't need to get into this whole multiple uh, science experiment thing. Oh well, I'll have to get it next time. And then after some further time warping, I ended up uh, finishing off the research on survivability and stability, which unlocked a whole mess of new parts, so I thought, well, let's get something cooking in the space plane hangar once again and uh, see if I can not make something that can get me over to the grasslands. There's no mission associated with this, but I thought, I'll get to the grasslands, see if I can collect me some science there. So, this guy's going to be built around the uh, Mark I cockpit and these uh, extra uh, bigger tail fins that will give me more lift than I had before. Now this thing still has absolutely no control surfaces on it. So uh, the only thing that's going to be controlling its attitude is the reaction wheels that are in the cockpit because I do not have anything else. Now, this is my first, can I call this a plane? Oh, we'll call this a plane. Yeah, I, th I, th I think I might be able to call this a plane. A uh, rocket plane, I guess. Um, but when building a plane-like vehicle, um, again, you want to think about where the center of mass and the center of lift is. But unlike a rocket where you want that center of lift quite a ways behind the center of mass, for a plane, you want that center of lift to be very, very close to the center of mass. And don't forget to check where that center of mass goes when you start draining fuel. So take the fuel out of the tank, see what happens to the center of, um, center of lift be or center of mass because if that center of mass drifts behind the center of lift, your craft is going to start to become unstable and you don't want that to happen. Also, this thing has no, I don't have any landing gear, so I'm gonna have to land this uh, via parachute and uh, without landing gear, I'm going to have to come up with some sort of a takeoff system. So I thought I'd take advantage of the uh, rotation tools that are built in here. Set this up on a bit of an angle. Uh, use my newly unlocked radial decouplers and uh, some, some uh, modular girders here and see if I can build myself a little bit of a launch platform. Yeah, I think this is pretty good for a first try. I think it's time to... To launch this thing. Of course we're going to launch in simulation mode and uh, sort of see how this works. All right so here we go. Throttle up. Lock on the SAS. Launch. Whoa whoa. Oh. Ooh. Okay. Okay well that didn't work so well. That's okay. So let's restart the simulation and what we'll do is we'll change the staging so that the engine maybe has a chance to spool up first uh, before we uh, hit the decoupler. See how that works. Ooh, come on, go, no, no, up, 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 oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no, that didn't work so well either. I think I'm going to need to go back to the editor and give this thing a bit more of a launch uh, angle. So launch it at a higher angle. We'll try that out. I'll also spin this thing around because I want to go to the grassland. So I, I want this thing to be going the other way, not launching towards the water, but launching back towards the grasslands and the mountains that are the other direction from KSC. Launching to the west. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so here we are and oop. Oh, well, we'll go for it anyway. Obviously, I got to work on this uh, launch system a little bit, but we'll, we'll give this thing a try as it is. There, off we go, and oh, oh look at that. Okay, I don't care what anybody's saying, this is flying. Oh yes, we have ourselves a rocket plane. This is very nice, and actually it feels very, uh, it feels pretty good. You seem to be climbing at a pretty good rate. This is awesome, Jeb's certainly liking it. You know, I like this camera. I like the way the camera works now. I like the way the camera's not just locked on. It kind of jiggles around a little bit. This is really nice. Okay, you can definitely get to the grasslands with this. Let's try turning. See how turning works. And, oh, 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 sort of sliding sideways. <laughs> Lateral stability is a bit of an issue. 
I think a tail fin might be in order. Either way, you know, considering the only control thing I have are the reaction wheels in the cockpit, this ain't so bad. This is pretty good. So you can see I've run out of fuel. So I'm kind of just gliding and we're going to have to come down with the parachutes. So we'll, we'll, we'll deploy those. And then we'll just cut down to, uh, to getting towards our landing. Okay, so here we are. The parachutes now have fully deployed. A um, couple of things I don't like. I don't like that it's coming down on this bit of an angle. There's not much I can do about that. I can't control it. I'm trying to pitch forward, but this is as far forward as it's going to go. The other thing I don't like is that we are coming down at uh, oh, pretty much nine and a half meters per second. That seems a little fast, but we're about to touch down and find out if it is too fast. <laughs> yep. Yep, that's too fast. Okay, so this is obviously going to take some more tweaking, but as a proof of concept, I think that is worth, uh, that, that's worth exploring further. And further tweaking I did do, but I'm not going to spoil it for you because I want you to see the final craft when I go to use it for a mission. Uh, and, but that's going to have to be for in another episode because right now what we're going to do is we're going to send Jeb to space. This is the Kirkery, which you saw going through its design pains earlier in the video. And one of the issues that it had was with its center of mass moving down too far. And I'm going to try and deal with that issue using another mod, Pack Fuel Balancer. And what I'm going to be doing is setting up so that the top four cans are going to be uh, retaining its, their fuel right until the end. They'll be the last ones to uh, to drain their fuel. So I'm going to I'm using the highlighting tool to figure out which cans it is that I want to work with. And then once I've determined that what I'm going to use is use the transfer in feature to make it so that as the fuel gets drained, uh, the fuel will constantly be transferred into the top cans. And what that will mean is that these will be the last cans that will be empty. And I'm going to put the menu off to the side, and I didn't realize at the time that I should have done the same thing with the oxidizer. Um, that would have been a smart idea, too. The other thing that uh, TAC Fuel Balancer has is um, a balance all button. If you press that button, it will drain fuel from all of the tanks equally, rather than draining them from the top down. So it's really nice to have that, that, that ability to control the way that your fuel tanks burn. Anyway, we are now off, and remember with this, it, I, I, I don't have a whole lot of control. The only control is coming from the reaction wheels that are in the command capsule, so I want to try and keep this straight and true, though I do want to treat, cheat a little bit towards the east, because I do want to end up putting this thing down in the water. But it really does want to drift southwards. It's having a, a bit of an issue doing that and I'm trying to push the pitch over and trying to get it more towards the center but it just doesn't want to go that way. Otherwise though this thing's flying pretty good so we're breaking now through the cloud cover. Yes, breaking through the clouds for the first time. Oh, just broke the 7500 meter distance, 300 meters per second. You'll see as we go through this that uh, records will be falling like flies as we uh, make our way up to our maximum altitude. 11.5 kilometers distance achieved. I'm not opening up the materials bay or because I only have one shot at using it which is going and I'm going to save it for when I'm up in space. 750 meters per second achieved. Having a little bit of control problems. Oh, and I have just gotten into the upper atmosphere, so I'll open up a mystery goo. Not going to open up anything else. I'm not going to do a crew report because I do not have the ability to do EVAs in space. Uh, so I'm only going to be able to do one crew report because I won't have the ability to take the crew report and remove it and then store it back in like I've done in the past. So I'm just going to save that one for space as well. Ooh. 1,050 meters per second speed achieved. And there we go, we are out of fuel. 
in my apoapsis according to Kerbal Engineer is over 104 kilometers that is well into space so Jeb we are getting there Twenty eight kilometer distance. You can see the um, on the messages over there at the top right. We're now up to twelve messages, and all of those have just been basically uh, records being broken. Thirty nine kilometer distance achieved. And there we go, 70 kilometer altitude, that puts us into space. So we'll do another mystery goo, we'll do the material study, and we'll do a crew report. Fortunately, we can't do an EVA, so that's going to be it. Now, although we are in space, we are not going to be say, staying in space. You can see from our trajectory here that we're going to be revisiting the surface of Kerbin very, very soon. This is a suborbital trajectory. And some people get a little bit confused by this, that you think you get in space and that's all there is to it, but that's only half the battle. The other half of the battle is to achieve enough horizontal velocity that you stay there. The more horizontal velocity you get, the further you will travel before you end up impacting the surface once again. And the magic number as far as horizontal velocity is about 2.3 kilometers per second to stay in low orbit around Kerbin. And according to Kerbal Engineer, my current horizontal velocity is only in around 390 meters per second. Not nearly enough for an orbit. So, uh, yeah, this, is, this isn't going to do it. So the orbit's really got just two components to it. One is getting up into space, which is in Kerbal Space Program, getting above 70 kilometers the other half of it is getting the horizontal velocity, which I don't have. Now, I'm going to ditch the ascent vehicle here. And what I like to do is turn myself to one of the normal vectors. And that pushes that off perpendicularly to the plane of my trajectory. And I like doing that because that means that that thing, unless it does some funky aerodynamic, funky flighting, flying, uh, it's not going to encounter us again. If, if, you, if you eject the capsule, especially when you're going prograde or retrograde, you, you still have that thing in your path. And uh, the last thing you want to do is run into your own debris on your way back down. And we are now on our way back down. We have reached our maximum altitude and now going back down again. And this, I'm a little bit nervous at this point because... When I tested this thing, I only got to about 75 kilometers before my fuel ran out. And uh, it re-entered into the atmosphere without any issues from 75 kilometers. But now I'm dropping from about 104 kilometers. I haven't tested this. And, you know, there is atmospheric heating now in uh, the full release of uh, Kerbal Space Program. So I'm going to be generating a lot more Gs now that I'm falling from higher up because I'll be hitting the atmosphere at a greater velocity. That means generating more heat. Well, sorry, Jeb. You are in uncharted territory right now. We'll have to see how this works out. There we go. We're about to hit the atmosphere, so I've slowed the time warp down because I don't want to do this at a time warp speed. And I'm going to keep it as I uh, pass through the atmosphere. I want to keep it on the retrograde vector. And of course, the thing that's going to get the hottest is that mystery or the uh, materials bay, which I don't want to lose, but because I want the science from it. But uh, if anything's going to blow up, it would be best if that blew up rather than obviously the parachutes or the capsule blowing up. So I'm going to try and keep it on that retrograde vector as well as much as I can. Our velocity is picking up. Well, we can see our debris falling alongside us there. Velocity up to 1,200 meters per second. G-force is starting to climb, and now we're getting our heating. This is where things are getting scary. Hang on, Jeb. Whoa, up to 4 Gs, 5 G, 5 G. Whoa, whoa, no. Oh, geez, yeah, heavy capsule, light materials bay. That's what's going to happen. Wow, pulling 7 Gs going through the atmosphere, eyeballs first. Not particularly comfortable for Jeb, but he seems to be enjoying it. All right, worst is over. Nothing blew up. 
still have my parachutes. Trying to see if I can turn this around, but I decided to deploy my chutes anyway. I wanted to make sure I slowed down quite a ways before I deployed the chutes because I'm not sure exactly what the new atmospheric model does with deployed chutes in Kerbal Space Program. I know when I used to play with Deadly Reentry, uh, if you deployed those parachutes traveling at a very high speed, they would end up just breaking right off. So I didn't want to risk that happening, but everything's going fine now, as you can see. And we'll slow the time warp down as we get close to around 700 meters from the surface. I don't like being time warp when the parachutes, there we go. I don't like being time warp when the parachutes, uh, fully deploy. I always worry about the physics going a little bit wonky. Okay, closing in on the surface now. 40 meters, 30, 20, 10. Flash down. All right. Now it's weird the uh, science alert is uh, kind of shining up there. Not sure what that's about. It's saying I can do an EVA report, so Let's see what that's about. Yep, hang on there. Let's do an EVA report. And I'm doing an EVA report from Kerbin's Water. I'm kind of confused by that because I swore on my first mission that I got an EVA report from the water, but whatever. I might as well take it. Let's see if we can get Jeb back into the capsule. Oh, no problem whatsoever. Beat aboard. And there we go. All right. And that gave us 54.2 science giving us a total of 77 science. Recovered the parts from the vehicle. Unfortunately, never did recover that first stage that we jettisoned because I didn't have the part count to be able to uh, put any parachutes on that. 16 alerts here, almost all of these for various records that were broken. Plus there was a contract to escape Kerbin's atmosphere, so that's great. Wow, so many records being broken. Uh, I'm not even gonna list them all here. Uh, but they all added up to quite a substantial sum. You can see that besides almost having 78 science now, I also have over 440,000 curb bucks. So that's going to give me some flexibility. The science is going to allow me to unlock some more parts. And the money is going to give me some flexibility as to what to build and what to upgrade. But I think that's going to have to wait for the next episode. I hope to see you then.